Hello, this video is going to talk you through Typhoon Haiyan. Um, this is an example that we use as part of the natural hazards unit in particular, we use it in the weather hazard section. So AQA say you have to be able to know this is a named example of a tropical storm and you have to be able to talk about its effects and responses. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So the first thing we always start with, as with all good case studies, is having a little think about the location description. Now this typhoon hit the Philippines back in 2013. This map here gives us some indication of exactly what happened on the track of that tropical storm. The most important points here to note really is that this happened and mainly affected Southeast Asia. The typhoon, as we can see here, started in the Pacific Ocean and then traveled right the way through the center of the country, okay? It hit some of the Philippines' major cities before it obviously carried on. And we can see the full extent of that track right the way in this red area here on our diagram. So the big points to note here that, yes, the tropical storm did change in terms of its severity. But the impacts on the track of it here really caused us to have a lot of primary and secondary effects. And likewise, also enabled us to have some immediate and long term responses to this event as well. So... Let's quickly go through them, some of the effects of this tropical storm, okay? And I'll jot these down on the screen with you as we go. When we talk about effects of things, we can break these down. Helps if I have the right pen, isn't it? We can break these down, okay? Into primary and secondary. So when we're talking about primary effects, we're talking about effects that have immediately happened, things that happened straight away because of this tropical storm. When we're talking about secondary effects, we're almost talking about the knock-on things, the things that happened as a consequence. So if we start then having a look at our primary effects, well, the big things we started to see here were wind speeds of about 314 kilometres an hour. Okay. So we've got pretty fast winds, therefore those winds battered a lot of homes. So we saw homes, buildings and shops damaged. Okay, So classic primary effect there to be honest. We keep on going. Because of that we saw big damages in terms of infrastructure as well. So their airport was damaged, and we'll talk about why that's significant shortly. Furthermore, and sort of building on that then, they had power cuts. So the strong winds took out the power lines. Well, again, that's going to affect homes and businesses. They had, I was thinking because it's a tropical storm and it's right on the waterfront, a five metre storm surge. If you're thinking, what's a storm surge? really basic terms it's a massive wave okay so bringing with it if we think about the sort of weather conditions a tropical storm would bring it's brought the wind it's brought the big storm surge it brought a lot of rainfall as well okay if we think about facts and case study detail we're talking about 400 millimeters of rainfall to be precise okay sometimes we like to think about the cost don't we and have big facts like that. So if we think about recovery costs, um, a lot of farmers, for example, and those employed in the fishing industry lost their jobs because of this. So one big cost here would be the cost of the damage, especially for them. So that cost currently stood at $724 million. Okay quite significant we might say well why is the cost of the damage in this case quite significant if we think about the level of development in this area that this typhoon has hit well they're not particularly well off they're employed in a lot of primary industry so highly likely they're not going to be earning the biggest wage so therefore these people might argue are likely to be impacted far more severely okay um, than a higher income country if we compare then, getting back on track, these primary effects to the secondary effects, you might be asked in the exam to argue which one of the two you think is most significant. So we almost want to do the counter or the flip then of all of these primary effects that we've just looked at. 
So the big thing that we saw here because of the tropical storm is an oil barge running aground. That means going from water onto the land. So this caused us to have 800,000 litres of oil that leaked. The damage from that, some people might argue, is far more significant than the damage to the airport, for example. So what this did do here was wash ashore. So all of that oil made it onto the land and that further contaminated 10 hectares of mangroves. If we think basic terms for hectares, we're pretty much talking about the size of a big field, a large field. So we've lost 10 of those worth of mangroves. Well, that's people's income. Again, thinking about the industry in the area, well, fishing had to stop. And the fishing stopped again because of the contaminated water. So people couldn't generate an income. So if we were to link that back to our primary effects, well, that's still going to cause us, isn't it, to have an even higher level of damage. Building on further from that then, if people's homes and businesses have been destroyed, they're going to be hungry, they're going to be without the basic needs or means to be able to go and afford food. So we saw lots of looting. Okay, looting as people were trying to complete for food and supplies. Looting is like another word for stealing. More than that, the demand this typhoon has placed on the resources in the area now means as well it's more competitive to get things. They've only got a certain amount of goods and one of those goods was rice. So the price for rice rose by 11.9%, okay, because the demand was so high. So many people wanted the food that they could afford to put those prices up. Along with all of this and because of all of the flooding, the biggest thing that we did see was the risk of disease and infection increase. You might be thinking, well, why has that happened? Well, if you've got polluted water supplies and people are drinking that water, they're wading through that water, it's filled with oil, it's contaminating their food, then those things are very likely to happen. Okay. Sticking with the impact on people and sort of the final big one here, this typhoon affected 14.1 million people, okay? Be that they were affected because of aid, they might have been affected um, because they made homeless or their business was put out of business, okay? Um, all of which really culminated in some quite significant effects. We can break that 14.1 million people down a little bit further and say, well, nearly 5 million of those people already lived in poverty, so that might give you some idea of just how bad some of these effects are. If we scroll over and consider the responses, a bit like we did with our effects, we broke them down into sort of primary and secondary. With responses, we can almost break these down and call them short term. And on the far side, we can put long term. So short term, really in simple terms. You might say things you can fix immediately, you can help with straight away. Whereas long-term responses are things that happen over, well, a longer period of time. So things that happened immediately because of this, well, the first thing they did was evacuate 800,000 people to get them out of danger. The second thing they did was have the president issue a warning on television. So we'll call that televised warnings. Next up then, one million food packs were distributed. Now, you might argue in the exam that what we've got happening here isn't actually enough, okay? To have one million food packs distributed, I would say it's not really enough to cope with the needs of that population. If you've got 14.1 million people that have been affected by this, does one million food packs really touch the surface? Probably not. Thinking back to those power cuts we said they had, the power was restored after one week. Okay, so the energy did come back to the area. And the aid was offered. Okay, but again, not as much as you might have hoped for. They got $1.5 billion, that's US dollars, of aid. 
And how much did we say the damage was? That's it, 724 million dollars, okay? So some people might say, well, yeah, it's obviously more than that. But think about the cost of things like food, etc. Is that enough to rebuild infrastructure to the same standard? I'd probably argue not. In terms of long-term responses, there are three major long-term responses here that we could argue are going to be quite significant. But the level of development of the Philippines might well hold back how effective this is going to be. So the first thing they launched was the Build Back Better scheme. Okay, now this scheme does exactly what it says on the tin, in theory. The Build Back Better scheme said, well, all of those buildings that have been destroyed, we're not just going to rebuild them, but we're going to upgrade them to ensure then that in the future, they stand a better chance of surviving any damage. Thinking about the storm surge along the coast, they entered into a no-build zone. So that prevented development too close to the shoreline. And last but not least, they introduced a storm surge warning system. And some people might argue, well, that's quite effective because then that gives people a chance to evacuate or to move away from the area. OK, so in the exam, you might be asked to compare effects to responses. Or you might be asked to compare primary versus secondary and short term versus long term responses. Either way, this video, I hope, gives you more than enough points to help you to do that. Feel free to pause it so you can take notes now on the primary and secondary and short and long-term responses. And as ever, if you've got any questions, go and ask your geography teacher.